What's going on sales pros? I have a great treat for you today. I sound like Tony the freaking tiger there for a second, didn't I? Regardless, I have a great treat for you today. I'm super excited, I'm super happy. I have an icon in sales, a legend, a guy that's done billions of dollars of sales in his lifetime. Most of them from infomercial and online, a lot from real estate as well. I mean, this guy is a stone cold killer when it comes to sales. He's one of the most high energy people I've ever seen. He is a best selling author. He's got digital products that have sold nine and 10 figures. I mean, dude, this guy's got accolades that one day I aspire. Well, I aspire now, but one day that, uh, that man, I just hope I'm half as powerful as he's been. And today what he's done is he's partnered up with Russell Brunson, friend of mine who I've worked with for a few years. And uh, Tony Robbins, you know, who just happens to be in the picture behind me on my wall. I might know a little Tony too, right? And uh, because of that, uh, I've asked them to come on and join us and talk a little bit about what those guys got going on. I imagine they're about to do one of the biggest sales movements in the history of internet marketing, knowing the three masterminds that are behind it. So I'm pretty excited to bring him on. Looks like he's watching. Let's see if we can uh, get Dean on here and make it all happen here. Looks like it's going to be smooth. All right, here we go. And we're back, my man. How you doing? Good. How are you? Perfect. All right. Perfect, man. I can hear you clear. <laughs> can you hear me yep, now? Sir, everything's perfect. God, that's so... Tell me that's not the most frustrating thing in the world. <laughs> uh, you know what, man? I, I, and I'm sure you know as well. I've been doing this long enough to where I know it's going to happen. I just know. You know what I mean? So I expect <laughs> it. And if it doesn't, I'm like, well, hell, that was easy. So, so no problem at all. You know what's so funny? Russell and I went live the other day, and the same thing happened. As soon as I had earbuds on and he did. All right, cool. Sorry. I'm trying to turn the volume up a little bit, hit the wrong damn button, man. It's always going to be something. So. <laughs> well, listen, here's the thing. But now we're here. Let's add some value to your hardcore closers. Yeah, absolutely. First, before we do that, I just want to say, hey, thanks for, for spending some time with us today. Uh, I actually part you of it, uh, Ed Milet and Andy Frisella's program. So I saw you there at the uh, Ritz Carlton a couple months oh, ago. Oh, oh, cool, man. And, uh, and, and cool. I, I really that's, like they're, a great, they're a great bunch of dudes, Yeah, man. they're good people, man. Uh, Andy... Andy and Ed are really good people, man. They're solid. Yeah, I agree. Especially, you know, sometimes you meet somebody behind the curtain and they're not who you think. They're they're better behind the curtain than they are in front. You yeah, know? I, I agree with you. I agree with you. So uh, so it's great on what you're doing, man, and I wanted to get you on here so you can help out some of the, the sales pro, pros and uh, yeah. entrepreneurs that are in our group here. Yeah, let's do it, man. You Listen, you know your group better than anyone, so ask me any question you want. I'll be as raw and real as you need and there's no question it's off limits. Just tell me what I could do to serve. So this group is uh, 80,000 strong and it's uh, sales professionals and entrepreneurs, right? So somebody mm -hmm. might be a roofer, somebody might be a real estate agent, they might sell cars, they might sell mortgages, stocks, merchant services, 401k. So we've got like, this yep. is like the fight club of the sales community, right? Like you remember the fight club, he's like, we're the janitors, we're yeah. the carpenters, right? Like we sell everything, <laughs> like, we're in charge of selling everything back here. And so uh, a lot of these guys though, uh, thanks to people like you and myself and, and inventions like phone sites and things like that are making more money than they have in a long time. Most of them more than they have in a lifetime because the economy's good and everything else. So one of the repeat questions that they actually ask uh, in this business is, you know, how does somebody get started in real estate with just a little bit of money? And, and I know that you have been in the real estate game for a long time. I read your book recently, I uh, listened to it on audible where you were talking about, you know, flipping your first deal and not mowing your own yards and all that stuff. So, so if, if somebody's making a quarter million a year and they've got, you know, an extra 25,000 or something like that, that they want to throw into multifamily or single family, what kind of advice would you give them? So, so with anything in life, just gain the capabilities, right? Like, um, don't, just don't try to do it on your own. Now, here's the thing I would tell you right now, the, the market we're in, and, and again, I want to talk about persuasion and sales skills because I think those are even better than my real estate skills. But when it comes to real estate, just remember this, is usually when everybody's getting into real estate, it's when the economy is booming, you got extra cash, you got extra money coming in, and everybody's like, I want to get in. 
right now is the time most people are putting their money into real estate and it's really not the best time to buy and hold or fix and flip. The economy, the real estate market has officially turned, but most people won't start talking about it for at least a year. The, the days on market of how long a house is on the market is almost twice as much as it was a year ago. So if a house used to take 60 days to sell, now it's taken 120. It means the real estate market has turned. Now, I teach people to profit in every market. I've been doing it forever. On the way down, gain the capabilities to learn how to wholesale. Or you have to buy at extreme discounts. If you want to buy and hold and you don't have the time to master it, what I would say is stash your cash for the next three to five years because the market's turning and there'll be a bottom. If, it, if you just want the simple way of buy and hold, which is great, I own hundreds and hundreds of houses right now that I buy and hold. But I'm not buying any buy and holds right now because the market's at a peak and it's turning. So buy and hold, hesitate unless you steal it. Fix and flip, hesitate unless you steal it or learn the art of wholesaling. And that's, that's really just marketing for other investors. So that's, that's my 30,000 foot view. It, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a good answer, man. I, I appreciate that. You know, I uh, actively invest in real estate and I'm seeing houses definitely slow down uh, days on the markets get yep. longer and stuff. So I appreciate that. Uh, the honesty there, you could have easily said, you know, well, here's what I recommend. Get my course and go out there and buy as many as you can right now. So I, I really appreciate the honesty, man. So uh, yeah. the, the, the big question that I have, and I know that everybody watching this as well. So, uh, a couple months ago, I was at Frank Kern's uh, office. He's been a, a friend of mine. He's actually on his way here now. Uh, he's been a friend of mine for about a decade now. And he mentioned you. And in passing, he talked about the massive amount of sales you have made from from uh, TV. You know, and he just kind of gave me a round number. But I mean, I was I was mind blown from the infomercial. So, you know, my my biggest question, and I know the people in the group want to know this as well, is what are some things so now we're in a world where we sell one to many right back in the day for you an infomercial yeah. was the only way to sell one to many social media and all that shit didn't exist yet right so what are some True persuasion story. Yep. techniques that maybe you used in there or that you would use today in videos and social media to to achieve the same purpose that allowed you to do billions of dollars in sales yeah so let, let me just give you a little a background sure. right so in 1998, I bought Tony Robbins' course off of an infomercial. No, 96, probably. I bought his course off an infomercial. It's the first time I ever paid for knowledge. Everybody told me I was nuts. I got ripped off, and it fundamentally shifted my life. It fundamentally shifted the way I thought, the way I looked at things, and I just believed him wholeheartedly. I was already on my way to being successful, but life got exponentially easier. I cut a check for knowledge. I paid for speed, and my life changed. It changed so much that two years later, I filmed my own infomercial in the front yard of my house. I obsessed and built my first course, and I launched it in early 1999, maybe 1990, November of 1998. I launched my first infomercial. So there was no internet. There was no niche marketing. When you launch an infomercial, you're just – you're just casting a big wide net out into the ocean. You know, if, if you're a niche marketer or you sell to, you know, if you're, you're a niche marketer, if you're a car salesman, because someone's looking for a car, if you're a roofer, you're a niche marketer because you're talking to somebody who needs a roof. Imagine just going to a room of people and say, who in here needs a roof, right? Who in here needs a car? Like you got to convince people who didn't even know they needed a roof or a car or anything you sell so infomercials really made me great at persuasion. I was already good at it. But when people ask the secret, so anyway, I, let, me die, let me finish that. So I, I'm infomercials for almost 20 years. My brands and my companies have broke a billion dollars. Um, uh, do you get to keep all that? No, but I feel blessed on how much success I've had. But I really ignored social media. I think this is important for every single person to listen. Because what happens is someone says, oh, he's good on infomercials. He's good on YouTube. He's good on Facebook. He's good on Instagram. He's good at writing copy. He's good at VSLs, video sales letters online. Like you get all this thing. And I knew it was bullshit. Like I, I have to be honest. I knew it was bullshit because I ignored social media till about a year and a half ago. I'll just be honest. I had a hundred million plus a year brand doing infomercials, impacting people's lives all over the world. People are using my real estate strategies. They're using my success strategies, my marketing strategies. I'm like, eh, Instagram, Facebook. I don't, I don't want to get so personal. I don't need it. And it really wasn't, it wasn't cool. It wasn't cool because I was missing out on a whole demographic or a whole couple different generations that I believe needed what I had to share. And I didn't look at it through those eyes, you know, 
I looked at it through, hey, I'm making an impact. But then I realized like I had people come to me of a younger generation and be like, Oh man, I, I heard you were a badass, but you only got 10,000 followers on Instagram. Man, I'm going to follow someone with a lot of followers. Now, there's amazing people out there like hey, Cody, two of the best right here. What's up, Cody Sperber? Cody Sperber, people like that. Like, there are people who actually do it and then they share it and they help people. There's other people who just have a million followers. So I'm in this framework of like, there's somebody who never ran a business, but they have a million followers are going to be perceived at a higher level of worth than me where I've had multiple 13 different companies before I went into the information space, right? And it really hit me. So why am I telling you guys this story? Because it'll make a, an impact on you. A year and a half ago, Cody was one of them and said, dude, you got to get on social media. You got to get on Instagram. You got to get on, so on Facebook and do lives. I'm like, oh, so I, I obsess. I go to masterminds and groups and surround myself with great people. And I get the algorithm. And here's what I want to share with everybody. The same things I did to be, have one of the top infomercials in the world for almost 20 years, to generate over a billion dollars through my brands and my companies, I just took that same authentic, transparent, feeling, it's living through the heart. I'm gonna share a few things on what I do to get in the mindset to sell. I took the same messaging, Ryan, and I just started sharing every day on, fa on Instagram stories. I started sharing on Facebook Lives. I started sharing on Instagram Lives. And I didn't come up with a certain tactic. I didn't come up with my Instagram strategy and my Facebook strategy and my YouTube strategy. I just did the same things I did building an infomercial business. And right now it's not huge in comparison to some people, but in the last year, we're over 420,000 people on Instagram growing mostly organic, mostly from word of mouth, a million and a half on likes on Facebook, right? Our, our social media, I've sold over a half a million millionaire success habits books through social media, through Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So we went from not being a part of social media at all. Two years ago, you never saw an ad of Dean Graziosi. You didn't see a post of Dean Graziosi. Everybody under 40 didn't even know who I was, even though I'd been in this space before. I mean, I have to, I have to say this, and it's funny, and I, I don't know him personally. This is nothing negative at all. But literally, when I first came on the scene, people were DMing me like, oh, stop trying to be the new Ty Lopez, right? And I'm like, Hey, no disrespect. I don't even know Ty, but I, I was doing this when Ty didn't even know this was an industry, right? <laughs> but, here, but here's the cool part. Here's the cool part. The reason I shared that with all of you is because sometimes we get overwhelmed with delivery systems. Like, what do I do on Facebook? What do I do on Instagram? What do I do if I do TV, direct mail, all these different things? What I'd say is go deep on what your messaging is. And I'm going to give you a few points. And maybe you've heard these before, but I want you to hear them from somebody who's been doing it and has stayed relevant through sales and marketing for 21 years. And before that I was in the car business and the housing business and I used to sell then. So I've been selling and persuading for 30 years is where we lose focus is on a couple really simple things. So hear it for the first time, people will buy from you. They will learn from you. They will give you money if they feel understood, not if they understand you and Ryan, you're a badass at selling, so you know all this, and you probably already teach, your, teach all of the people who work with you and are smart enough to follow you, teach them this. But I wanted to hear it from a different way. I mean, here's the other thing. You can go to the gym you know, and work out like a madman. If you only go one weekend a year, you're not going to be in shape. Sometimes you got to hear it over and over. When we get good at sales, sometimes we want the person, the other person that's going to get the roof, get the car, buy the online course or whatever it is you sell. We want them to understand us. We want them to understand our value. We want them to understand our expertise. We want them to understand our product. We want to under them to understand our pricing is better. We want them to understand our value is better. And we do so much of trying to make the client understand us that we miss the most crucial part of selling. People need to feel understood. Think about this. Think about this. I'm taking notes, man. This is good shit. Have, have, have you ever been uh, at an event where you see a speaker and the speaker, man, you're in awe of the speaker, comes out, great experience, and the speaker comes up and shares what he or she has done and how the impact they made and how many books they sold or how many, how many houses they sold or whatever it is they do and you get done and you go, that guy was a badass or that girl was awesome and then you wait for the next speaker. That speaker, I'm going to give you this uh, identity now, this new framework to look at. That speaker was really good at you understanding them and you being impressed by them.
but you typically don't take an action. And then there's another speaker that'll come up on stage. And Ryan, you're going to think of one when I say this now. And you hear him talk, you're like, holy shit, this guy gets me. Wow, he was right where I was. Oh my God, he dealt, whoa, whoa. And then you're writing notes. You can't even stop writing notes. And when you're done, you would do whatever they said. Even if they don't ask, you're like, do you ever watch a speaker? And when they're done, you go, man, I wish this guy or this girl was selling something. I would take it. Like, you know that feeling? Because that person allowed you, allowed the people in the audience to go, They've been where I've been. They understand how I feel. And they're the path to get me from where I am to where I want to go. So one of the things I always think about before I come on here, like before I come on with you, Ryan, I know people in your sales. I don't want to sit here and just brag. I've done a billion. This is what I've done. Never, like, that's all good shit. But at the end of the day, I was that broke kid who lived in a trailer park with my mom. I also had envy and jealousy of people that were getting ahead when I was, all my buddies were going off to college and I was working in a collision shop, sucking in fumes every day with dirt under my nails. I also know what it was like to break through and sell more than most guys. I already knew what it was the, to break through and get to a hundred grand a year. And I thought that was amazing. And then I knew what it was like to fail and lose everything. Then I got to a hundred grand a month. Then I lost everything again and, and was stressed out. And then I learned to sell authentically from my heart. I just said, I'm just going to be the most transparent person in the world. I'm going to tell people about my screw ups. I'm going to tell them what's right. I'm going to tell them what's wrong. I'm going to start freaking listening to people. I'm going to stop talking so much because I hated salespeople that never shut up. So I started listening. I started reading as I was growing my business. I started reading thousands and thousands of comments and I started listening and feeling people's pain, feeling what they were going through. And then I got to a hundred grand a week and I started going deeper and being more authentic. I threw in 2007, I threw all my infomercial scripts away. I haven't used a script, not one since 2007, not for a call to action, not for an open, not for interviews. Somebody interviews me. I'm like, you asked me what you think would be cool to know. I don't like, I threw my scripts away. I started living this. And then all of a sudden I got to a hundred grand a day in sales. And then I started to get into a hundred grand by lunchtime a day. And if I look, it's for a few things. And I know I'm on a ramble. No, dude, I love it, man. I got, this is, it's really, this is really important to me. This is really important to me because I want to give you strategies. If you're watching right now to help you close better, hardcore closer, love the name, but I want to tell you something at the end of our lives, if you become a multi-billionaire from selling and you sold something shitty or you sold something inferior or you sold something that didn't truly impact people's lives, it'll be the worst life you've ever lived. I just know that for a fact. I'm 50 this year. I've lived in this. I've sold crappy shit when I was a kid because I could. I sold and got dates when I because I know how to persuade. You're going to get good at persuasion or you're already a badass. Step up your game on what you deliver. You work for a company selling something shitty but you make a big check, fucking quit. Like literally change the way that you, you want the universe to pay you back. You want God to pay you back. You freaking use these persu persuasion skills to sell shit that impacts lives. If you're not, then freaking go. Do something else. When you sell, you can make money anywhere. Don't compromise yourself. Don't, don't launch your first product because you're dying to and it's half-assed, but you know you can sell it. It'll come back and bite you. I've been, in this, I've been an entrepreneur for 30 years. I've been in this space for over 21 years. Sell things that impact people's lives. Do you want to get better at selling? Love what you sell so much that you know for a fact you're doing people a disservice if, they don't get, if you don't get their credit cards. Literally think about what I just said. Know for a fact that if you don't get their credit cards, you're screwing them over. When I get on stage and people ask, I was at a Tony Robbins event. I speak at the Wealth Mastery event. The guy gets up before me, does this amazing presentation, rocks the house on stocks, on how to invest in stocks. They, he sold, I think, 12% of the room. Great group of people went in the back. They were all liking him. The guy provided, provided massive value. I got up. I, didn't, I felt like I didn't have the right slides. I wasn't. This guy was dressed sharp, solid dude. I forget his name right now. I got up with this same t-shirt I have on right now because I have about 30 of them. I had t-shirt awesome. and we're jeans, my slides. Yeah, I have my slides that were kind of screwed up. I barely used the slides, but I know that they felt that I care. I know that they felt that my course would, I would be doing them a disservice. Like what I thought about is like, I'll be screwing all of them over if they don't get this in their hands. When I got to the pitch, I didn't hesitate. I leaned into it. We sold 50% of the room. There was a mob at the table in the back with no fancy sales pitch and wait, you'll get more and anchors and tie downs and stacks. It was like, I lived the experience. They knew I wanted to help their lives. 
and I sold, I mean, we we have a video of people because I said the first 50 would be able to come to my high level event uh, VIP. We had people literally 10 rows back winging credit cards at my team, like literally throwing them, right? Now, does that happen every time? No. Am I bragging? No. All I know, I didn't do anything special except I wanted them to feel understood. And I knew that my product was so damn good that if they didn't get it, I was screwing them over. So when I got to the pitch, I didn't feel bad. So many people, even when they call themselves hardcore closers or salespeople, when they get to the actual ask for the money, they start wavering and their lip quivers and they get nervous. It's like, to me, you just don't freaking love what you do. Don't, if you don't love what you do, find something else you love and all of a sudden your sales go to another level. You have a course, make the course better. You sell cars, make sure you're selling the best cars. You're going to be a roofer, sell the best damn roofs on the planet, and you'll watch your sales go up without any fucking sales you know, secrets or tactics. Then when you add on, you take that foundation of loving what you do, you take that foundation of letting people feel understood, you take that as a core of who you are, and you stack on what Ryan teaches you, game over. There's nobody even in your, there won't even be anybody in second place. And, and just so you know, that next level of persuasion – there's a million people that sell good, just so you know. There's a million people that sell good. There's only a handful that sell excellent. There's only a handful that truly understand people. There's only a handful that enter conversations already going on in the mind of their prospect. There's only a handful that love what they do so much that it becomes a fucking passion. And that's when you go from 10 and 12 and 15 million a year to 100 and 200 million a year. That's my pitch. Dude, that's what I'm talking about, man. I got a whole bunch of notes here. And, uh, dude, that was some good stuff, Dean, for real. Which, which really leads me to two things. First of all, these are the shirts that I wear all the time, too. And uh, just next-level shirts from Amazon. They're, like, super comfortable. And, and this is, them. like, the entrepreneur's uniform, though, right? And uh, just the black V-neck. But so let's say that somebody here is making, you know, 80 to 150 grand plus a year. And they're selling yeah. something that, that's easy for them to sell, but it's, it's not – what they're passionate about and it's like what you said a shit product right and uh yep. they, knowing and, and let's say it's not even like a shit product it's just knowing they can do better right knowing that they're not they're yep. not operating with excellence like you said so how does someone like you and i we're crazy as hell we like you took a step from the mechanics thing into real estate i took a step yeah, from yeah. banking into internet marketing like so so how does that what advice would you give to the people really great question stop? yeah really great question See, here's the thing. As I said that, so many of you are like, hell yes, and then reality sunk in, and you're like, yeah, but I still got to pay the bills. We all have to pay the bills. Listen, I wasn't perfect in my entire 20s. Like, when I first launched my course in 1998, I thought it was great. I look back now, and I'm embarrassed of it. Here's the thing. As long as the intent is there and you're making steps. So if you have a job, I tell everybody, if you have a job, right now selling something that you kind of like but not in love with find a way to love it find a way to improve it if you can keep that job while simultaneously cut all the make a not to do list in your life like literally this is going into the personal growth side of my life make a not to do list and stop doing all the shit that doesn't serve you doesn't serve god doesn't serve the universe doesn't serve your family doesn't serve a bigger better version of you doesn't serve making more money like cut the shit out of your life you shouldn't be doing so do your job to pay the bills, and when you have that extra time from all the crap you threw out, hanging out with the negative friends, getting drunk too many times, partying too much, listen, it, I'm just going to say it. Living life the hard way is easy, and living life the easy way is hard. So if you're – listen, life's going to be hard no matter what. You might as well do your own thing. Working for someone else is still hard, right? Uh, and when I say the easy way, like literally – Eating McDonald's and not working out is easy today. It's hard when you're older and you got diabetes and you're not going to see your grandchildren. Working for somebody else right now and selling something you don't like is easy because you get a fat paycheck, but it's going to be hard when you're 60 or 70 and realize you missed it, right? So you might as well put the effort and energy in now. You might as well put the, the, the hard work in now so you can live easy. Listen, I'm not bragging. I've had, I struggle more than, just as much as anybody on here. Sleepless nights, no money, all that stuff. But because I put the hard work in, today when I'm done with these interviews, I'm picking my kids up at 
245, which I do every day that they're with me. By 3.30, we'll be doing homework. By 5, we'll be outside playing baseball. By 6 o'clock, we'll be doing homework and getting things done, making dinner together. 7 o'clock, we'll probably watch a little TV and I'll chill. And there's nobody on the planet going to tell me I can't do that. Tomorrow night, I'll be coaching softball. Friday, I'll be coaching Little League. Like, that's what I want out of my life. If I want to hang out with my, my fiance when I want, like, but I put in the hard work, now I'm living the easier way, right? So- Damn, I like that. With that, so, so if you're, if you're going to make a transition and you know you can, you can't, maybe you can't go in and quit today. That's okay. I couldn't either. But damn it, find a way to love what you're currently doing because how you do one thing is how you do everything. Try to improve it if you can. If you work for another company, tell them to step up their game. Tell them I could sell better if you step up. Feel better about what you do. If you sell cars, tell them to put a better warranty on it. Fix it. Do it to it. Like whatever you got to do to feel better and watch your sales exponentially grow. If you love what you do, don't. if there's not one other thing you do in your sales except figure out how to love what you sell, you're going to get a 25% lift just like that. Just like that. Then all of a sudden when you throw out all the crap you shouldn't be doing in your life and you fill that with working on the real thing in your heart, the course you want to create, the book you want to write, the workshop you want to do, the mastermind you want to create, all of a sudden that starts becoming a reality because you opened up space in your life that's going to serve you, right? And the other thing to remember, and I think, I think Bill Gates said this, but we all overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do in five. Five years is gonna come like that, no matter if you start today or not. So why not start today? It's very true. Very true, man. You know, uh, one thing that, that you know is uh, rare about you, you're one of the few people to do this. And I, I have two more questions for you, and then I'll let you, uh, I'll let you go about your family and stuff. And, and so second to last question is, you know, going from someone raised in a trailer, like many, most of us get in sales because we weren't born with the silver spoon and didn't get to go to college and get a corporate one hundred fifty yep. to three hundred thousand dollar a year job, right? And so, <clears throat> a lot of people, though, thank thank God, right? Thank, thank God, God, exactly, because that doesn't finance what you know is around either one of us right now. And so, um, and so, but but the thing is, when you're that, when you grow up that poor, like you and I did. And, and your parents believe that like 50 or a hundred grand, you're told all your life, that's a ton of money. Yeah. And then you finally get there. And, uh, a lot of people realize it's not that much money, but they're stuck mentally in a place where they can't fathom themselves making more. Well, you've went from making 10,000 a year to a hundred million billion dollars, right? Like in, in, and it takes a mindset shift. It's not just about working harder. It's not about going out there and having the right formula to scale and stuff. A lot of that has to do with the, the inner mentality that you have in your mind that allows you to feel like you deserve and stuff. So can you kind of give us some, some insight on that for the guys in the group that, that want to make more, but they're struggling with their, their mental restrictions? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so one is, first off, everybody that's in here is smarter than I was, at least when I started, is – Nothing has impacted my life more than being a part of groups, workshops, masterminds, communities of people that stretch your mind. Absolutely. The last thing you want to do is be the smartest person in the room. The last thing you want to do is be the richest person in the room. The last thing you want to do is be around people who are happy with being okay. Yeah. I don't want to be around people that are happy, uh, complacent, okay, like stretch your thoughts and when you think 50 grand is a max or 100 grand is a max, find someone like myself or John Paul DeGiorio who's living out of his car, didn't go to college, broker than shit, has a dream of selling hair products when he's never even been in the hair product world. And the guy goes on you know, from encyclopedias to creating Paul Mitchell and Patron Tequila or Richard Branson who quits ninth grade to start a newspaper for students and the whole world except for his mom tells him he's nuts, right? Like – Find motivation, surround yourself. It's good that you're in this group, but get in masterminds, run masterminds, be a part of, be, surround yourself with people where you don't feel like the oddball. Listen, entrepreneurs and salespeople, we feel alone in our thoughts because most of the world bought into the bullshit of doing what everybody else does to go through this college, go through the corporate world. I'm not being disrespectful to people who've gone to college, but the truth of the matter is Napoleon Hill predicted it right. In colleges, in, in, in Think and Grow Rich, written in 1937, colleges provide general knowledge. And then 
if that's not working, you go back and get your bachelor's, your master's, or your doctorate in general knowledge. The only way to true wealth is specified knowledge, speci specialized knowledge, learning the exact tactic, the exact strategy from somebody who's already doing it. I mean, the old way is go to school for five years, work for somebody for 20, finally gain the capabilities and become the manager or the, the vice president. Now people are smart enough to join a group like yours or join mine or Tony or Russell or all these great people and go, no, I'm just going to learn how to market from one of the best marketers on the world. I'm not going to freaking go to college and spend 60 grand and waste six years. I could watch a six hour video from Dean and Tony or Russell or, or whoever and understand it in six hours, right? So the world knows that. So what I'd say is just stretch your mind, realize what's possible. Know that the, the thinking that got you, this is the last thing I'll say on this topic. The thinking that got you out of Egypt, the thinking that got you to 100 grand is not the same thinking that'll take you to the promised land, which is 200 grand, a million, 10 million, 100 million. You have to exchange your thinking or you'll stay where you are. It, just the way it is. And if you're happy with where you are, stay comfortable. But I don't think, I just keep thinking back when I'm 90 and I'm on my last breath, I'm not going to go, oh God, I'm so happy. I played it safe. I'm so glad I got 96,000 in my IRA and I, I'm glad I got that 1200 a month in social security because that could be enough to balance it. Fuck that. Like, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm trying to be shocking on purpose. Like, like think about that. And that's what drives me today. The, the legacy I want to leave for my kids, the impact I want to make on the world. Listen, I'm not being rude, but I, I'm blessed that I, I could just pull the exit chute right now. And what the hell would I do? Like, what would I do? Go to the country club every day? Pick up bad habits? Like, I love right now I'm obsessed with impact and giving back and like that drives me every day. Find the thing that drives you. Even if you can only work on it an hour a day next year, it might be five hours a day, three years from now, it's your full-time gig. And then you get 30, 40, 50 years of doing the thing you love. So you know what? I didn't expect you to give that answer, but I couldn't agree more because uh, having someone else, obviously I haven't seen your level of success, but you know, I've built a big empire myself and, and, you know, being around Ed Milet, having him as a mentor and being in his mastermind, being around Frank Kern and having him as a mentor. So smart. That's what's allowed me to go. You know, I could easily sit back and go, you know, yeah, millions of dollars. It's nice. You know, I got a nice house and families in private school and and, you know, drive Rolls Royce. And it would be easy to rest on, on my laurels. But but you're right. Being around the mastermind, like if you sit in the same room with guys like you and Ed Milet or you and Tony or I've been to Russell Brunson's house on numerous occasions. Like when you sit in a room with guys like that, it makes your thermostat. If you're a five, you of go course, to a 10, right? Like listen, you no listen, you, you, yeah, you being in that mastermind. I mean, listen, just surround yourself with Frank Kern. He's one of my best friends. Like guys, freaking amazing, nuts and crazy there. and alone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, oh, that might there might be just a spontaneous explosion. Both those people in yeah, one no, room. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but. But you surround yourself with Frank, you're going to another level. You surround yourself with Ed Milet and Andy Frisella and the people in that room. I spoke at Arate. Like, there's no way you're not growing faster. Like, it doesn't – here's the worst thing that can happen is, like, I'm crushing it. I'm good. Like, man, that's the fastest way to set. I love going someplace. You be around Ed, you're like, man, I got to step up my yep. shit. Right? I, listen, Tony Robbins and I are partnering right now. we got something amazing we've been working on for a year. I got to be honest with you. I think I'm killing it until I hang out with Tony. You know, I fly private on a seven passenger and I land next to his and it looks like you could take the plane I'm on and put it in the trunk of his plane. I don't say that to be like, but it inspires me. I know there's more, there's more impact to give the world. There's more, you know, there's more of me to give the world. And I love that, right? And listen, there are some people, and this doesn't make you bad, just identify. There are some people who want to be um, lifestyle entrepreneurs. That means I get to a million a year or 500 grand a year, I get to live my lifestyle, right? And that is absolutely amazing. And I have friends that are like that. They got to a certain level and they think I'm insane. I think they're insane, but that's awesome because it's both great. So just figure out, if you're a lifestyle, figure out what that number is. Go get in masterminds, do what you must, gain the capabilities, change your thinking, get there. Or if you're an accomplishment-based entrepreneur where you just want to keep, you climb one mountain, you want the next mountain, climb that mountain, you want the next, then understand that and continue to get the capabilities to keep accomplishing on next level. Whatever it is that drives you, man, just figure out your own DNA and use it to uh, disturb you into nonstop action. Well, and that's a perfect lead-in for the last thing I wanted to mention is, is you and Tony and Russell 
and uh, and several of us are doing something big to help people get in that situation that you just described. So are you at liberty to talk a little bit about that? I know the big launch is coming up and all that, but are you at liberty to talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, Tony and I have been good friends for about eight years, really good friends for about three. We talk every day. and We've always talked about doing something, a project together. How do we make impact? How do we, I mean, listen, Tony could have stopped working 20 years ago. That man is completely obsessed on impact. If you, no one knows what that guy does behind, um, what, what uh, people do behind the scenes. Like, you, you know, so many people have their first introduction to, personal growth was Tony Robbins. Like every successful person I know, it was Awaken the Giant Within or one of his courses. Like, again, everybody, doesn't matter, everybody I'm asking right now, give a heart or a thumbs up. Tony impacted, every entrepreneur I know, Tony impacted in some way. And he knows it, and he knows it's his responsibility to do it. I mean, the guy's on the road over 200 days a year. He's got an amazing wife he loves more than anything. Those two are the greatest couple. But this guy is out on the road beating him. He'll fly to London and do a UPW, stop in Australia, do two more day events, stop in California, stop in the Midwest, go back home for two days and back out on the road. It's not because he needs the money. It's because he wants to make this impact, leave a legacy, help change the world. So we talk about this all the time. And between the two of us, we have over 60 years in this business. And I don't think there's any two people in this space alive today that combined have touched as many lives as Tony and I have. So we were trying to think, how do we leave legacy? How do we make impact? How do we make self-education the new norm? Because if you look at it, if Tony and I didn't discover self-education, which is specialized knowledge and learn through masterminds and groups and courses and books, we'd be, we always joke, we'd be flipping burgers. And I don't mean that disrespectfully, but we would. So how do we make the world be present? Because colleges are failing. They just are miserably right now. So we decided to create the first ever gold standard blueprint to teach people like everybody watching has a skill, a hobby, an expertise or a passion that other people need. If you're in sales and you've been in sales for two years, there's somebody that's just thinking about getting in sales right now that you could save two years worth of work if you extracted what you know and shared it with somebody. So what we've done is created the first blueprint and even we spent a half a million dollars creating a software to help people extract what they know and share it in a workshop, a mastermind, a community, um, a group training, whether that's on Zoom, whether it's on in a Facebook group or whether it's live and in person. And we created that blueprint, we worked about nine months on it and we're obsessed with it. This is gonna, this is gonna, um, this is truly gonna change the way people deliver specialized education. But then we took it one step further. It's literally right now, the self-education business is $355 million a day being spent. And Forbes says we're on, on track by 2025 for that to be a billion a day. So we wanna share with people how to get in front of that wave, how to extract a skill, a, you know, a passion or an expertise you have and share it for a profit plus impact. We talked about before, you die at the end of your life and you made money, you didn't make impact, I promise you won't be happy. So we wanna help people make impact and profits and created a blueprint that we wanna share with everybody. So it's, it's a pretty cool thing. And if you're not an expert or don't have a skill, we created a process on how you could still be in the business by being the reporter of other people's expertise. I mean, at the end of the day, Tony hasn't gone live and trained like this in over 10 years. If you know Tony, we're going to be sitting right here. He is fired up. We're going to crush it. We'll probably be on for a couple hours. Russell's going to join us about halfway through, and uh, it should be pretty amazing. If you're looking for another level and you want to – if you liked what you got today, I would suggest everybody um, – I, you, I think you have a link, Ryan, right, that everybody can sign up for yeah, free. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be promoting it for you guys and, uh, and all that stuff. I've got everything set up. And uh, so those of you that are watching, just hang tight because we got all sorts of good stuff to – so I'm going to throw in my own stuff to make sure that you guys get even more than I'm going to massively over deliver what Dean and Tony are going to give you as well. So, uh, but that's like right around the corner, man. I, I'm, I'm excited for it, man. Yeah, no, we're pumped. We're pumped. Well, dude, Dean, I know that you're, you, I know I'm a busy person, so I can only imagine how busy you are. I appreciate you coming back here and leaving an impact. Forget the fact that you took time, man. You left an impact. There's so many people that come to, uh, groups like this that I've interviewed and, and no disrespect to them, but they're like, Hey, Ryan, what can we extract out of your audience? How can we get them to pay us? How can we get them buy our shit? What can we, you know, me, 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 my pocket, my pocket. And it's nice to see somebody on the same wavelength as mine. It's like, dude, I'm just coming here and I'm trying to leave an impact with these folks, change their mind a little bit within an hour 
and uh, maybe leave the group a little bit better place. So I really appreciate that, brother. You got it, man. And I uh, look forward to seeing your peeps on the live training. So let's we'll do it. We'll on there, and, uh, and hopefully I'll see you in person again soon, man. Thanks again. All right, man. Keep up the good yeah. work. Hey, guys, make sure that you uh, comment down here. Tag some so the thing keeps bumping. This is the biggest live stream. There's hundreds of you on here, maybe even over 2,000 at this point. Biggest live stream we've ever had back here in the group. We appreciate that. Tag somebody in the comments so people can freaking see this uh, back there. That being said, we be out of here.